It's not my first time getting power bombed. That's right. I used to power bomb you all the time growing up. You actually put me through the wooden floor in our living room. <laughs> The uh, feeling of knowing that dad and mom were going to come home to a hole in the floor was not the best feeling in the world. I forgot about that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to New Heights, a Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. We are your hosts. I am Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey. On New Heights, we speak things into existence like getting body slammed by Derwin James on Thursday Night Football. <laughs> Um, new Heights has a new show for you every Wednesday. Don't forget to watch and subscribe on YouTube. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, click that follow button on all social media channels. Jason, talk to us about what we got coming up. We got behind-the-scenes look at our games from week two, plus interesting news and uh, different related things across the NFL. But first, huge news for the New Heights podcast. We're going viral, baby. Huge week for New Heights last week. The podcast Huge. did amazingly well. Huge week. But perhaps even better, uh, we got to actually see each other. Oh, Trap yeah. came into Philadelphia for a little bit. The how city was, of uh, brotherly love, baby. Yeah, how was it? I barely get to see you because uh, I was getting ready for a game, but I got right. to see mom and dad and yeah. all of mom's friends. It was celebrating my mom's birthday, which isn't for another couple of weeks, but... Um, this was the, the date that worked out the best. You know, I don't really mind not seeing you. I'm really not there to see you. Uh, I'm there to see those beautiful girls of yours, Elliot and Wyatt. Um, had a blast with the fam, though. It's, uh, it's, always, it's always good to get everybody under one roof, man. We kind of talked about this on a previous episode. There's nothing like good old family time. And, and then on, on top of that, you know, seeing you get a win on a, on a Monday night game, big time game, the atmosphere was electric in Philadelphia. <laughs> Everybody showed out for the first home game, and um, yeah, it was a, it was a blast, man. Yeah, what'd you think of the link? I know you've been in it before, but how was it on Monday? I mean, I'm I'm gang green when I'm in that thing now. You know what I mean? Like I'm one yeah. I'm one with the people. I I don't sure. I, I don't I don't sit around in a suite or go up there, you know, all secluded from everybody, man. I'm in that thing screaming E A G L E S Eagles. How do you Did spell you? Eagles? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm the same way when I'm at the Chiefs in Arrowhead, so I appreciate you coming out. It was awesome to see you. Uh, let's get going with the podcast. Let's get it well, going, brother. We uh, we did pretty good last week. I'm not going to lie. Better than I thought we were going to do. Uh, we cracked the top three in uh, sports podcasts in the country, which uh, or in, I think it's just the country. I guess I don't know how that chart works, but we'll just call it top three in the world <laughs> just to in make the it world. sound better, uh, which was uh, did not expect to hit that as quick as we did, so I'll take it. Take and I it think and that thank you might to have, the listeners. Thank you I think, for tuning in. I think in. we owe a little bit of uh, thank you to, for sure, Sports Center for putting us up uh, and uh, really uh, -na -na, -na -na. elevating our platform there. I'd also like to thank Malcolm Rodriguez and Derwin James. Thank you guys for thank you guys. Uh, embarrassing us on national Making TV. Making us go viral. And, yeah, I mean, listen. I, uh, maybe we need to, we need to keep going viral. We need to keep getting our ass kicked. Apparently, podcast is really it. well. <laughs> Outside of that, we've also been getting some feedback from some fans. So I'm going to read some of our favorite comments so far that we've gotten on the podcast. Let's talk about it. All right, at ny2kc32. This might be a bot. I don't know. Maybe. That seems like a botish name. <laughs> All right. My only bad thing I have to say about this podcast is why didn't you guys think of this sooner? It's a great question, That's NY2KC32. Great question. All right, um, now. Honestly, <laughs> we were, we've were we been thinking about it for years. Yeah. And I, we kind of touched on this uh, on a previous episode as well, is you know just waiting for the right time, man. Waiting for the right time, right opportunity. And um, sure enough, I, I think we're, uh, we're very comfortable where we're at, you know, teaming up with Jukes and Waves. From that point on, it's just been – Getting on here, finding the time uh, for for each other to you know the leisure to be able to come on here with confidence and, and know that nobody's second guessing our uh, our motives, man. Knowing that we're uh, football players first. Absolutely, yeah. Right time, right place. Met the right people to make it all happen, and I think also seeing how uh, other athletes have done it, had success, and it's clearly not been 100%. a distraction. Yes. I think uh, all of those reasons are why we were kind of hesitant maybe a couple years ago, but. This year, it really became um, something that we were both looking forward to doing. Next comment. Jason Kelsey yelling, go. 
I think it was more like, go! <laughs> uh, it's going to be my no, new alarm clock it. sound. You paused it there. You were like, go! <laughs> <laughs> Which, it was a solid go. I could use that as solid. an alarm as well. I'm a... I always hit that snooze. The first one's always snooze, man, every time. I don't even know why I set the first one. And then the third comment we got here, there's absolutely no way I just found out that Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey are brothers through their podcast. Why does nobody think that we're brothers? I haven't seen it outside of me and you or the family. Yeah, it's not a common name. No. It's not like Williams or uh, Johnson. Jones. Like, this is a Jones. Uh, Smith. Sh- Schwartz. Yeah, no, these are... This is not a common name at all. I don't get why nobody has thinks we're brothers. I think it's because you're skinny and I'm fat. That's the only mm. thing that I can really think of. Little did they know when we were little, you were skinny and I was and fat. You were, yeah, you were a little chubby kid. You need to hit that growth spurt. That's, I'm still a growing boy, you know? <laughs> eat, your, eat your Wheaties, kids. Or your Kelsey Crunch if you're in Kansas City. All right, here we go. All right. what, were, there, were there any other... Uh, teammates friends uh that had any comments um no everybody just just enjoys hearing you talk football man obviously they hear me talk about it all the time in the facility so they're just uh seeing seeing it from a different uh perspective is uh, is always fun man and you uh you, you're telling the stories golden right now your narration is pretty on point good i'm glad people are enjoying it all right you take it off you want to take off with uh what yeah. we got in store Let's get it on, as Celebrity Deathmatch would say. Uh, let's tee up these 12 bold topics. I'm going to ask Jason a few questions about his game Monday night, and uh, he's going to ask me a few about my Thursday night game. Jason, why don't you start us off, baby? Sure. Yeah, Chiefs, 27-24 over the Chargers on Thursday night. We got to start with really uh, what gave us some uh, Sports Center uh, love in the first place. <laughs> How did it feel when Derwin James absolutely, I mean, powerbombed the fuck out of you <laughs> on national television? <laughs> well, it's not my first time getting powerbombed. So, um, That's right. I used to before. powerbomb you all the time growing you up. Actually, you actually put me through the wooden floor in our living room. <laughs> um, I forgot about that. Uh, uh, no, I remember it. Um, <laughs> the feeling of knowing that dad and mom were going to come home to a hole in the floor was not the best feeling in the world. Uh, but I think, yeah, it was, no. I think that hole was still in there when we sold that house. <laughs> never, never filled we it. Just, just put we the just couch moved over. The it. couch over. <laughs> <laughs> took him, took him. I think it took him like a week or two weeks to like clean the house to finally oh see that there was gosh. a hole under the or under the couch. That's funny, man. Wow. Woo! But yeah, no, not my first time getting power bombed. And obviously, we were talking about it last week. Derwin is a he's, he's a he's an OG in the game, man. He um. He's one of the best safeties. I, I think he's the best safety all around. Um, and then on top of that, you know, long drive, tired, started started that. I think that was like play eight or nine, maybe even more. I'm starting on the left side, outside the numbers, run around, Pat's doing his thing in the pocket, gets out of the pocket, rolls right. I catch the ball thinking that he threw me short. Where in reality is I could have just turned up and ran to the pylon and got in the end zone. It's the worst thing. When you watch it on film and you, you're just kicking yourself in the head, I kind of deserve to get my ass power bombed in that situation <laughs> for not getting it in the uh, in the end zone. And shout out to to everybody that grabbed me in fantasy. It's, it was kind of like um, Derwin James power bombed your entire fantasy team right there with me not getting in the end zone. Um, but yeah, no, I turned I made a cut back and then all of a sudden he is on me like lightning. I mean, he he, he surprised the shit out of me. Lower man always wins in football. When I felt him wrap my wrap his arms around my legs and There's that have moment, his, yeah. I'm There's honestly, that moment. I'm chuckling in my mind. I'm like this is not about to end well for me right now. Yep. I'm going up. What goes up? Must come down. <laughs> and he just, I mean, the body slam was, was funny, but what was even uh, more comical is uh, the fact that he asked me after the play or after that drive, he's like, bro, you good? <laughs> what a great guy, man. Yeah, what a great so- guy. <laughs> Solid dude. Yeah, that was. Uh, there's that moment in a power bomb where your feet are <laughs> off the floor and you're in the you're air. What, what was going through your head at that exact moment? Well, is any, first of all, is anything going on in your head? First thing is, 
Hold on, hold to, on to that ball. Exactly. Hold Which on to that ball. But you almost didn't. That ball, uh, the ground, you bounce so hard. <laughs> like, I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> you're not supposed to bounce on grass. <laughs> you bounced. <laughs> and the ball flew. Um, so good job holding uh, on to it. Until yeah, that, that was, ball. And honestly, I was talking about how tired I was just from not only that play, that drive, but after that, the ball hits the ground automatically, you know, as an offense, especially as a coach, you're thinking, oh, man, that was a close call. We don't know right. if it's a fumble or not. Attack, 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 get to the line of scrimmage, snap That's the right. ball before they can throw the red flag. Yeah. And it's like I'm looking over at the sideline like, no, we're good. We're good. We don't need to, Do we don't need to hurry no up. Tempo. We're good. Yeah. I, I got us. I got us. Hold on to it. Huddle. Huddle. Just to the, yeah. <laughs> can, I, actually, can I get some water? <laughs> you know, sub, one play. Can I get one play? We got a fresh set of downs here. Oh can I get off the fucking field? I just – but that, like you were saying, in midair, I'm like, just hold on to the ball. I'm also, like I said, a kind of chuckling, like, man, I look like a, <laughs> I look like a WWE dummy right now. I'm still kicking myself for not finding a way to get in the end zone on that play. And then two plays later, I got a little shovel pass that I couldn't get in the end zone. I just felt like a felt like a jabroni, man. Just a just the un unaccountable jabroni for not getting in the end zone. We ended up settling for three. Shout out to the chargers for uh for the stand but it's just um you got to find a way to get the ball in the end zone man that's the that's the bottom line yeah i mean well it was a crucial play in that drive and uh up until that point and uh i mean you guys had kind of been hot and cold on offense so why don't you talk us through because it seemed like the first half it took you guys a little bit to get going there they had a couple i think on your touchdown drive in the first half there was a they almost had an interception to stall that drive out what uh what did it feel like uh on Thursday night up against the Chargers just as a team. Yeah, I mean it was the it was the first time I think personally that we played a team where we had to handle adversity and you know that's a that's a huge stepping stone especially when you got new faces, new team. Um you have to be able to come together and the biggest thing for me in those types of situations is get back to fundamentals, man. The 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 feeling of wanting to get everybody rallied and get get them going and get them going in the right direction, you know that's a. You see that? That was like a ninja man. Did you I get had it? A fly on my head. No, I missed Did it. You get unfortunately, it? I missed oh. it. Missed it. It's all right. You just Something lie. tells me just it'll be Just tell me you got it. Being down ten rip, uh, that's never fun. Not coming out hot. Not not starting fast. You know we preach that all week uh, to be able to come out come out fast and and put up points quick for our defense. Um, that is our offense that you do not want to get behind, you know, like down in the game against because right. uh, because they got a lot of playmakers. They run the ball very well. They got a good O line. Um, so it's, Keenan Allen was out, luckily, but they still. Yeah. I mean, shout dude, out to Keenan Allen, absolute how good, dog. Well, I mean, but it also showcased just how good the Chargers team is because yeah. even with Keenan out, I mean, they still have playmakers across the board. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can't say enough about special. Mike Williams. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Williams, they did the freaking uh uh was Eckler. You can't say enough. I mean they're they're they are a very loaded team. Yeah. Um so and I didn't know this. You guys is this true? The last three times you guys have played, all three of those games have gone to overtime? That's a great question. I don't even know. I know they I always saw play this. tight. It's always a tough game. I know we lost to them at home, I think, the past two years. So that was yeah. a big one for us to get that win um, in the in the crib for the kingdom, man. Yeah, I think the biggest thing was like getting back to those fundamentals, thinking that you have to do too much in times of, you know, yep. uh, trying to persevere, you know, that gets uncharacteristic, you know, and that and, and you have to be able to just calm down and just play your game. And then, you know, you're the offense, the de the where, where, whether you're on offense or defense, the playmakers, the one the when the ball's in the air, you got to make a play on it, and that and for for me, um, I don't think I I did my job in that in terms of that. Um, I, I got to be a lot better for for the squad, and t and definitely um, you know the second half of the plays, finding work downfield for my guys to spring them loose and things like that. Just showing more effort because um, effort rules in this game, man. If you're if you're flying around with high energy, man, uh, good things are going to happen. So we just got to find that energy and, 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 and get through the uh, the tough part of the game like we did. Well, you guys found the energy in the second half, and it was the second half, half of the Watsons. You yeah. got Justin Watson with the long touchdown and then Jalen Watson with that pick six late in the game that really ultimately ended up being the deciding factor. 100%. Um, what is – first of all, who is Justin Watson? Jay Watt, baby. Second of all, the old Ivy League. Is there anything better than a guy coming in 
uh, with an r- opportunity r- randomly just popping up and making a huge play. That is all-time like, juice. All-time juice. It yeah. fires everybody up. Yeah. Absolutely everybody. And, th- I mean, it happened twice in the in the second half, like you said. Um, yeah. Defense was stepping up, though. It gave us a lot of momentum uh, with a few sacks and a, big, a few big-time stops. Um, it kind of got us to be able to regroup as an offense. But, uh, yeah, you, can't, you couldn't set it any better, man. So happy for Justin. And I've been telling everybody about it. Anybody asking me who should uh, – who, who they should draft in fantasy as a sleeper. I'm like, listen, that guy Jay Watt is going to be flying down the field. Well, and sure go. enough, they went man double against me, um, kind of left the, the middle of the – or everything deep and everything on the outsides of, singled up almost like a cover zero look. And, um, yeah, Pat, Pat saw it. It was actually a pretty crazy throw because he saw Justin out of, like, the corner of his eye. And within, like, a millisecond, that ball was out right. and right on the freaking money. Um but yeah, plays like that, uh, guys stepping up to the plate that you know haven't haven't had that chance yet or haven't had that opportunity yet. Um, All time juice moments, man, and you're uh, you get, it definitely sets the team up, you get them fired up. And you just touched on this, uh, which is something else I wanted to talk to. What is have you noticed a difference in the way teams are defending you guys now that you don't have Tyreek and some of the firepower that you've had in the past? You just talked about. Yeah, like, I noticed. I noticed some. Blitz zero in the first half. I noticed, uh, like you just said, they're doubling you. They're trying to take away uh, you as a primary target, which they've done before. But I think, I don't know. It seems like teams are playing you guys a lot more aggressive than what you've had um, the past few years. Is well, that fair I mean, to say or no? Arizona came out and just blitzed the shit out of us. I, I think you, there was a stat about Pat getting blitzed a certain amount of times in the game, and it was the most that he's had in his career yet. Obviously, you know, trying to slow the offense down with pressure, knowing that they got good DBs in uh, in Los Angeles. Um, I think that defensive coordinators are sticking true to their their regime more now that Tyreek's gone. Whereas gotcha. when Tyreek was there, you had to play some type of shell coverage yeah. against him. You know, you he's, just, he's that guy. And, right. um I think right now we have the speed to go up top, but until we keep hitting those big time uh, home runs like we did with Justin Watson, um, I just think, yeah, it's uh, they're going to keep just playing their style of defense. And, sure. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, you'll still, I'll still get the the man double like I kind of mentioned earlier on on big third downs. Right. Um, yeah. And then you know that kind of doesn't doesn't change but at the same time it we're we're pretty consistent with seeing what we're what we're getting on film now so i know uh big red although stoic on the sidelines and in press conferences uh when juice needs to be made or something needs to be said to get guys going he has a way of just like either a look or like a very simple like you know, hey, we got to get going now, something like that. But it really oh, yeah. gives the whole team energy because you know he, when he actually says something, it's like, okay, we better get it together. We Big better, Red's we on better us right figure now. it yeah. out. Yeah, one hundred percent. What did what did Andy say at halftime of the game? It was it wasn't as much as necessarily wake up, you know. But it was it was like, hey, the defense is playing their tail off. Let's go ahead and match that energy. Let's go ahead sure. and match that success um, and put this enti- entire game uh, together here and. Um, that's that's where he's the best, man. That's where he's the absolute best. Everybody respects the hell out of him uh, because yeah. of because of just the guy he is, the leader he is. How uh, you know he's he's not smoking mirrors. You know what you get is is Coach Reed every single day, and uh, and you can respect that. And you know in moments like that, we can rally behind that guy, and that's yeah. uh, that's something that you know I've been so fortunate to have out here in Kansas City is the ultimate leader uh, at the at the top to be able to get the guys going and get everybody refocused. When he gives that look, you better you know tie them laces up a little tighter, <laughs> buckle that chin strap up a little bit more because yeah, we got to get this shit going. Yeah, that's one of the things that I always loved about Andy was you know there's something about like stoicism and about um, a coach or a man being uh, unwavering in his like like where he's at, you know what I mean? Like yeah. at no time is he giving you some, you know, you know, tr- like some falsehood, right? Or he's, he's not trying to say something just because something needs to be said. You know what I mean? If he's yeah. saying something, it's for a reason and it has a purpose. And he's when he gives you that look, he's looking at you for a specific reason. So it hits that much harder. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not like some like TV movie 
uh, from a member of the Titans where you're yeah. like trying to make you're like a that moment. dramatic speech. Yeah, no, it's it's a hundred percent authenticity. Sunday, Al Pacino yeah. or whatever Al Pacino is that? That's his name, right? Well, <clears throat> yeah, not remember the Titans. Yeah, uh, any given Sunday. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Nice, right on. But um, yeah. Well, let me Coach ask you Reed. this: Does Sirianni got that? Does he have that kind of Everybody demeanor? Leads him. It's different. Everybody leads in their own way. You know, Doug, Chip Kelly was different. Doug Peterson was different. And Nick Sirianni is different. I do think that Nick is very authentic in who he is. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, players see through bullshit. You know what I mean? 100%. They see through, uh, whether it's from coaches, whether it's from players, leaders Front on the office. team. Yeah. It, I mean, you can tell whether somebody's being real with you or not, usually. And um, I think Nick has a – he is – authentically himself and um that's all you want and he's he keeps people accountable he he keeps the team on like focused on the right things and constantly trying to work to get better and he embraces who he is sounds and like the ultimate makes, leader yeah that's that's what you want man 100 um, percent. So, so let me I, let me uh, ask you let yeah. me ask you this then do you think that a coach that just has that demeanor that fuck you demeanor like a like i think a, a guy like Dan Campbell has that, I will fight you right now. I think Dan Campbell and everything I see on Hard Knocks and what appears to be um, is that he is an unbelievable motivator and that he's great at getting guys going and great at getting guys juiced up. And that is an important part about being a head coach. Mm-hmm. Um, that is not obviously the only thing about being yeah, successful. I'm, I'm saying more so does the toughness kind of reflect and make a team tougher if that if the coach has that aspect and instead of like maybe a guy a small guy that doesn't have you know the football background or you know what i mean i mean i i think it certainly can but i've also seen fake tough across i mean there's words are only go so far right and that's Mm -hmm. why like you know andy i wouldn't classify him as this like conventionally like tough talking individual as a good coach right but he's very mentally tough he's very dialed in and focused and methodical in his thinking that's a toughness that i think is more right. important in football now i'm not discrediting i i love and andy, andy doesn't say he'll kick your ass but he's got that that look on his face like you can fuck yeah, around and find out exactly you know <laughs> what i mean i don't know dan campbell enough i love the way he talks to his team i love all yeah. of his interviews but I can't speak on the other part. Um, I and I wasn't, team, I wasn't talking I know his team is tough. That was just the first one that came to mind. Yeah, and I played the, the Lions, and they for sure played tough. They they're, ran around, played hard, played physical, so they're certainly matching that intensity. Um, but, you know, I think, um, again, it has to come off genuine. When I watch Dan Campbell, it seems like it comes off genuine. Andy Reid, it comes off genuine. If you're with a coach where it's not coming off genuine – it's going to then the players are going to bullshit and then it's not going to be real so be real. that's that's really what it comes down to in the post game real quick oh, okay mahomes in the post game talked about uh his pff ranking which i don't know what it is is that something you guys talk about often in kansas city no um do you think pff gets it right ah I don't know. I who's Tough the topic. yeah? I mean, everybody. The thing is that these PFF graders are they're grading off of what they think the play should be, right? Whereas you know we might have a specific fundamental or we might have a specific call that you know takes us into something else and the play doesn't work. If the, if I'm making making it make sense, you what are. you see, what, you know what I mean. The, the graders don't necessarily know the objective of the play or the fundamentals that were being taught. They're kind of just looking at it as a general play. And uh, that's where I think it's not really a, a, a actual graded performance like you would get in Correct. the facility because they just don't know what we're scheming. And um, that's where I think it's kind of smoke and mirrors. But other than that, a, a guy has a great game. I mean, obviously he's going to have a higher grade. And uh, that's... You know, I think that's always going to stand true. Um, but I also think that there's agents out here paying guys to get higher grades than, than others. I wouldn't I name do. any names. I have wondered that for years. I, I what? try to wondered believe. It? It's like, yeah, it's no doubt you think my that's mind. a fact? You no think that's doubt fact? my mind, yes. No doubt my mind. I don't think so. I, I, I 
choose to believe that PFF is more credible <laughs> than that. But um, I, more credible, yeah. I, I yeah. think I think that if that was true, that would completely ruin their website. So I don't think that happens. You don't think there's agents doesn't. out here paying these scouts to give higher grades so their players could make more money when they when it comes down to the bargaining? Gosh. You don't think there's uh, there's agents out here trying to s- slither their way into a few extra? I don't think so. No, I don't. I think that there's agents trying. I think PFF. Uh, it's happening, Jason. I it's just think happening. it would be so. Uh, well, either way, this is what I this is what I do think. I think um, I think PFF does a good job with the information they have, right? Which is just the film. Okay. Uh, they can only grade on production that they see on the film. They don't know nuances of coaching or what guys are being taught. They don't know the nuances of all the individual rules or what was called on the field. But I think they do do a decent job at judging uh, wins and losses and things that are pretty transparent on the field. So I think what ends up happening because they don't have all of the information, I think where PFF usually gets it right. The most is on the extremes. I think it's easy to tell whether you know what's called or not. If a guy's kicking ass or getting his ass kicked, that's a good point. I think that that's a pretty fair way to say it. There's a lot of in between where it's a little bit ambiguous. Is that a loss? Is what was being called? I think there's some, I think in the middle ground, I don't know that the PFF grades mean as much, but I do think they do a pretty decent job at telling who's getting their job done the best or who isn't getting their job done. That's fair enough. And the other thing I think with PFF is. The one thing that I always put a caveat with their grading system is I don't know that it, and it might. Truthfully, I don't know a lot about how PFF grades things. Uh, So I'll just say that to all the listeners. I'm not an expert in how PFF does things. But um, I think that uh, when you're just grading on production and you're not factoring in either the difficulty of the job or um, who you're playing against, right? So like, you know, if one tackle goes out and he shuts down, you know, a defensive end that, you know, isn't really doing much, right? He might get, you know, he has zero pressures, but all of a sudden, you know, Lane Johnson's playing Khalil Mack and he gives up one pressure. To me, like, I think Lane Johnson played better because he played a harder guy. Mm-hmm. I'm giving love to my guy Lane Johnson right now. Shout but to Lane. Um, these are things that I think, you know, and, you know, I think certain offenses – Guys just have harder jobs. There's drop back offenses where you're you're pass blocking and you're asked to do things that are a lot harder, you know, play action, nakeds, things like that, where it's nowhere near the difficulty level of what like a a traditional drop back drop offense back. is for an yeah. offensive line. All in all, I think PFF is a is a pretty good job on the extremes. I think it's a it's probably yeah. I don't want to say it's. It's a good way for fans to gauge without any knowledge of how players are doing, but it's not infallible. And I think that that's infallible. where players infallible. that's where I think that's I where players kind of struggle with the grading system. F L fallible. Is that A B L A B L E? Can I get the origin? Anyways, I think that's where players <laughs> um see the problems with it is they know when PFF doesn't get it right because they're in the meetings and they're like, okay, well that guy actually had a really good game. I don't see where they're getting that from, but anyways, um, all in all, uh, I think it's a good website and, uh, they rate me really high. So I think it's really good. Uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the Eagles versus Vikings. You guys take them down 24 seven, which was, uh, an action packed first half. You guys came out strong, in the in the first quarter, um, Jalen obviously got in the end zone quick. Um, off to his best start, man. I, I don't know the last time the Eagles were two and zero, man, but I, it's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, um, I wish I could remember any of the starts of our seasons, really. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, Jalen went twenty six for thirty one, three thirty three, a touchdown, yeah. and then obviously two rushing touchdowns. It's the first quarterback in NFL history to go for three thirty three. Over 80% completions and uh, rush for multiple touchdowns. It's his second game in a row of being dominant, uh, 
pretty much mistake free. No, it was uh, he awesome. Had, he had the one interception on the screen that was a fluke, went off Tip of the running back's hands. Yeah. yeah. Uh but I think um man, he has been so dialed in these first two games. He saved us against Detroit this last game against Minnesota. It felt like we were all clicking offensively. It felt like, especially in the first half, uh, you just talked about how Andy talks about getting out to a good, fast start. Um, especially when you when you lose the coin toss and you receive to start the game, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's really important to start off good because you know you you're going to get one less one less possession in that second half. So it's it's really important to get off uh, to a fast start in those types of situations and. Right from the get-go, I thought the coaches had a great game plan. Started out with some no huddle on the ball, empty sets, spread them out. That got them tired right away, got us tired. But uh, I love when the D-line's tired. I would rather have me and the D-line tired than me and the D-line fresh. Because when we're both tired, it just turns into a lean match, brother. It's just, (laughs) hey, oh, let's just lean on each other. Ain't nobody going to make any plays. It's going to be good. We're going to let these skill guys ride this one out. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be keying so in on you uh, late in drives now and see, <laughs> see, the difference, see the difference of the demeanor. Bro, that, that sub that comes in, those starters go out right around the 40-yard line, <laughs> come back in on the, <laughs> on the 20. It's like, no! I'm lucky. I don't right, have to deal the... with that as much. A little bit of nickel. <laughs> a little bit of nickel. You'll get a fresh DB to come out there. But for the most part, they're out there more than I am. I'll get I'll get a playoff before a, a DB will get a playoff. But I feel you. You get those pass rushers, those that the fresh oh, yeah. D line. That's uh, and that's where teams are really great. You know, you got the depth at D line and O line. Right. The battle's always won up front. But to talk more about Jalen, man, he came out quick or fast as we as we were mentioning. I appreciated his confidence in the pocket. I appreciated his decision making. He looked like he was, he was just out there balling. He would, he's, I think when when he, I don't want to say struggles, but when it when it's not going as smooth as it wants to, he gets a little too calculated, and that might be you know what's what the defense is showing and things like that. But anytime you tie a quarterback's feet up or you make him a, a, a second or a tick late on his throws, um, that's what you're trying to do as a defense, right? Is play with that rhythm. But um, Jalen was—he was smooth through the entire game, man. He was making great decisions with the ball, um, and uh, obviously he's special with his feet. Do you think there's any uh, real comparison to a to a Mike Vick? I think uh, I think personally that uh, Mike Vick kind of transcended this style of quarterback, and that's really the only comparison. I think Jalen is a is a different player in terms of how he actually plays the game, though. Yeah, I mean, there's been running quarterbacks before. I, I, you know, I, long story short, no, I don't think Jalen Hurts is Michael Vick. I think Michael Vick was an unbelievably rare talent, had a cannon for an arm. Cannon. But they're just because they're both running quarterbacks that can also throw the ball doesn't mean they're the same player. I think that they both are are they are unique in their own ways. Uh, you just talked about Jalen feeling more confident in the pocket. You know, this is this is the first time he's had a whole off season, second off season with the same, same offense, offense from the offense, year right? before. Yeah. That's crazy. So, I can only imagine. I've had the same offense for ten years. Obviously, exactly. it's grown, but I can only imagine having to jump into a new one every single year. Yeah, and, and and we have new plays in this year, just like every year. You're putting in new plays, but this has been a year where he's really been able to continue to learn, continue to iron all these things out. And as you know, being confident. Really, a big part of being confident is being prepared, uh-huh. right? Nerves, nervousness or anxiousness a lot of times comes from not fully understanding what's about to happen, yeah, right? Having questions, you've yeah. repped things over and over again. When you know the progressions in and out, what coverages you're looking for, how you're looking to attack them, when you've constantly repped that over and over again, it is a lot easier to go out there and be confident, deliver the ball, and we're seeing that within the first two weeks. And we saw it gotta, all off season as well. So gotta, I. I yeah, I could not be more proud of how Jalen's played these first two weeks, and looking forward to uh, watching this all season. You can't, you can't dismiss all of that, and then you put on top of that, you guys have some ballers out on the football field to help them. Yeah. Your offense is just clicking; everybody is on on the same page. Um, it took a it took a few quarters or a few drives for AJ to get his first his first reception, but obviously once he once he gets going, man. Um, 
what a stud, man. I got to see him in the family room afterwards. I was like, dude, you just look good dude. in gang green, brother. You just I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, man. You just it Bro. fits you, man. The swagger, the 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 build, the offense I think is more suitable to your you know, your skill set. Um they move you they move him around you guys move him around more, I think, than what he was doing in Tennessee. And then on top of that, man, he's just got more around him in terms of uh uh supporting cast. You know, Devontae is out there. You guys got Dallas making f- huge plays for you guys uh, in between the hashes. And it's just, you know, it's uh, it's cool to see everything clicking. Um, and then, obviously, the Philadelphia crowd just going nuts all game. Not very many boos. The only boos that I heard were at the ref this game, and that's always a good thing. We had some unfortunate penalties, especially in that second half that stalled out some drives. And, yeah. Uh, you know, Philly fans are uh, never shy to let you know what they think of you. So it's notorious. Man. Uh, I don't feel bad at all for the refs getting booed. I've been there before, and uh, <laughs> it's part of being in the link, baby. During the Monday night broadcast, they brought up that uh, Jalen squatted six hundred pounds in college. Yeah, I mean he's 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 a workout warrior. You're doing anything like that, you're a fucking workout warrior, man. You're getting I, yeah. after it in the weight room. And uh, have you ever have you ever been? I, I feel like you were a six hundred pound squatting guy. Oh, At least yeah. when I saw you when I saw you in college, you used to you used to get under the rack. First of all, you would bang your chest against the barbell like yep. a maniac just yeah. to get you in the right mindset. You would get yep. under that thing, and then you would do this like, <laughs> yeah, gotta get hit, hit the right, get the hips right, get the get core the activated. Right. Yeah, you would lift it up, and then for whatever reason, you would hold your breath for like two minutes straight. <laughs> That's, not, that's a good strategy. Not, you did not breathe. No, there were a few times that after you got done racking it, that it, you almost no, you almost flexed happened. out. You almost flexed out. Never happened. Get I've seen those videos. Here. I've seen those videos. It's never happened to me. That's a false statement, everybody. <laughs> Travis is lying. I've never I've seen almost it. passed out. At least twice. I at did almost twice. do it. Vision gone. Vision I, I gone almost, at least. You might not have just went full body limp, but vision was definitely gone. I did almost do it on a front squat, but that was because the bar was pressing on the carotid. I've never <laughs> done it from from just a, a pure holding of my breath. The vol- What's it's, the most it's called, you ever put on the rack? What's first of all, that maneuver of holding your breath is actually called Valsalva maneuver. Yeah. It creates more core tension. So you take your breath in, yeah. and you clinch your core. It's a... <sighs> uh, it uh, provides more shock energy. doctor. Shock doctor taught you that. I remember that lesson. The old mouthpiece. Shock. The mouthpiece. The there was that one mouthpiece, dude. You came home. You were wearing that thing every single time you lifted weights. Yeah, actually, Paul Longo taught me that. Our strength coach in college. But you know who else taught me legend. that? Legend. Paul Longo, legend. When I was a uh, meat leaves and berries. When boys. I was a rookie in the league, and it was the lockout year after I got drafted, I was working out at Cincinnati. And uh, because there was a lockout year, all of the Bengals were working out at Cincinnati. And uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Andrew Whitworth when I was at Cincinnati. Big Whit. And, and one of the first things Whit said, how to stop a bull rush, he said, all right, push me. And he, and he just let me push him. And then he went like this. He's like, all right, now push me. And he was like, <gasps> I tried to push that dude. He was like a fucking wall. Couldn't move him. <laughs> He's like, that's how you stop a bull rush. So, and I was like, yeah, maybe. You know I what swear that just made me think of is the balance bands. The I don't balance know, bands. I don't even know where you're at. But all I thought was, I said, when Witt was 6'9", I don't know, 340, 340 I mean, he's huge, monstrous Enormous. of a human being. And I was like, listen, Witt, I didn't say this at all, but in my head I'm like, Witt, you're 6'9". Maybe holding your breath works, stopping the bull rush for you, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to get up under this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, certainly extremely rare for uh, quarterbacks to squat six hundred pounds. Yeah, no, um, yeah. Back to the initial question, yeah, the topic. No, here, the, we got the, we got a little side. Jalen, but, Jalen putting up six hundred pounds is always going to be impressive. So I think Jalen was like a like a I don't know if he was like a c- competitive weightlifter, but he was a huge weightlifter coming out of high school. And uh, last off season, uh, I was actually lifting with him, and he was still lifting. I mean, we'd be deadlifting the same amount of weight. And I remember thinking, I don't know if this is good that we're doing the same type of lift. <laughs> uh, so I think he is. Uh, he's changed up his weight regimen. I think he looks. Um, he's still, you know, he, I think he's always going to be naturally just a muscle bound individual, especially in his lower body. But he is a much more fluid, and um, 
he he it looks like he's put more emphasis this off season and throughout uh training camp and everything on you know fluidity and athletic movements as opposed to uh just lifting heavy weight which i think probably at this point in his career once you've already had that foundation of strength you know playing quarterback position is about being fluid it's about having good footwork it's about 100%. having hips that move uh in the right way. I think all of those things are more important than squatting 600 pounds. And I think that that's made him but uh, a, when a difference on the field. When he's on the five yard line, finding a way to get the ball in the end zone. Like great he point. did last night. Just yeah. strong. When you run through BBs. three guys, yeah. that's where the 600 pound squat comes <laughs> in. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Talking about that Vikings Eagles game on Monday night, um, underrated rivalry. Are we thinking that the, are we, are we saw Eagles, Eagles fans trolling. Um, I doing the skull th- chant in the uh, in the middle of the game when they knew that they had the upper hand. It's a, I, it was actually enticing. I wanted to do it, but I have friends on the Vikings, so I couldn't. I, I couldn't get myself to to go full full century. <laughs> but, um, but it was uh, it was pretty good. Do you guys think? I mean, you guys met up with them in the eighteen NFC Championship game. Um, I was at that great game. Cold, but great game. Um, yeah. Is it, you think there's a little heated rivalry between you guys? No, I mean, I think that that, uh, I mean, whenever you're playing an in-division opponent that you think is good, which I do think the Vikings are a very good team. I think they have yeah. a great defense. I think their offense is stacked. I think they have great playmakers. Um, I think that they're going to be one of the better teams in the NFC. So whenever you're playing a team that you think is really good, it's kind of like a rivalry. But I think that that rivalry probably is more for the fans. That has been building up ever since that NFC championship game from 2017. Um, I guess it would have been 2017 season, 2018 was it when the championship game was. But uh, there was heated blood for that one. The Minnesota fans came in cocky. They went to the Rocky steps, put like a Minnesota jersey on Rocky. Which, oh, wow. I mean, I hey. Not re- dude, listen. Minute. The f- Where the Eagles, were the guards at? Are you kidding me? Saying, you guys don't have any guards around the Rocky statue? You guys no, don't have man, any security? Thing, you kidding listen, me? Listen, listen. It's it is eye for an eye, uh, you know, uh, justice when it comes to the Rocky statue. You can do whatever you want, but you better be willing to take the hits and be uh, held accountable for whatever happens to Rocky. All right. I think um, Minnesota has this like hunky dory midwest feeling that like oh we just came in there and they were rude to us and it's like you guys are doing the skull <laughs> chant and you guys were putting stuff on the rocky steps and this in the statue you guys were making this an animosity act, you were asking yeah. for it well i'm just saying you guys weren't without any type of uh uh you know fault for uh antagonizing the situation now, the Eagles fans probably went a little aggressive from some of the things I've heard. There might have been things thrown at buses. I think we can probably do a better job of uh, keeping it a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, a little ask, uh, more asking civilized. Philly fan, ask, asking Philly fans to clean it up is a fucking joke, okay? That that ain't going to fucking happen. I can Listen, say you that you come right into now. the link for an NFC championship game and you're taunting the Eagles fans. I mean, Fair come game. on now. Yeah, Fair game. I, mean, I don't know what you want me to say. You know what you're getting yourself into, and then you can't be after the. That's like when you were in the back seat, and we're sitting on a road trip, and you would antagonize me, and then I'd hit you, and then da- and then I'd get in trouble. This is fucking bullshit. Yeah, you antagonize well, that whole situation, and they're like, "Oh, what's going on? Why are you doing this, Jason?" Keep yeah. your fucking composure, Jason. Okay, right. they're just words. You didn't have yeah. to throw fists. Yeah. All right. Well, either way, I I got a ton of respect for the Minnesota Vikings football team and their oh, yeah. fan base. We're having fun right now. Uh, I think the Eagles fans are obviously extremely vocal fan base. 100%. And um, if, if love we're getting if we're getting into trash talking, uh, I don't know that there's a better uh, fan base uh, you want to go into uh, one of those battles with than the Philadelphia Eagles fans. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'll give you guys that. You guys definitely. <laughs> Carry the trophy in, in terms of <laughs> that East Coast shit. mentality. Yeah, I respect. Yeah, it's, it, a, it's a rite of passage growing up in Philadelphia. I'm sure. I will. I was thinking about this while we, while I was watching the game. One of my favorite matchups of the night was uh, Jefferson versus Slay. Yeah, that was and and hats off to Slay. Jeff is not an easy cover, and there were one of the um, best receivers were, in the league. Yeah, I mean, best route runners I've ever seen. 
absolutely can go get the ball fast. Um, and Slay was – there were a few routes that he ran for him. I don't know if it was scheme or if he just had a tick on, on a few of the, the routes. And I know that the, the red zone pick, that I mean, he, he jumped a post, you know, and it, and it was a time. And he post. dropped a pick right before that one. Yeah. He no. dropped a pick. No, I think then got to pick the next very next play. Yeah, no, that was his second one. I'm, I was talking that about was the, the first, one, the first one. Yeah, the first one he just ran the route for him. The second one, Kurt, we gotta we gotta give my guy a chance. I'm not sure what the communication was there, but it looked like it was terribly thrown under well, terribly thrown I, short. Um, yeah. But and he just added to his Monday night resume. I don't know uh, about Kurt's uh, Monday record, but I do know that Slay is only proving that he's. If not the best one, I mean certainly one of the best corners in the one hundred percent. To me, he's the best, uh, especially after watching what happened last night. Um, it's hard to argue that now. Yeah, that was um, fun to watch. I it mean, was fun to watch. Got, truly, me, got me antsy in my seat, man. Let me get a shot at Slay, man. Ah, God, I don't know. I don't know what the outcome would be, but I definitely want. Yeah, you don't want that. I, want, I, I do. I do. You I do. Love, I love. I love going up against the best, man. Let me see if let me let me get a shot at him, man. All right. All right. No, but well, all the all the respect in the world for him. I'm not saying anything like that, but you already know yeah, I mean, it's fun going up against the best. Love those battles. Yeah. You know, Justin Jefferson was talking a lot of trash leading up to the game about how he wanted to put up big numbers. So, uh, you know, Slay knew he was going to have to have a hell of a game, oh, yeah. and uh, that he was going to have to be ready because, uh, uh, you know, that's obviously their premier target. And he answered the bell, and then some. Had uh, two picks, and yeah, I don't know how many pass breakups, but tremendous yeah. game from Slay. So obviously I was I was rocking the six two at the link, uh, which is awesome to see everybody because you don't see fan bases really wearing the O lineman jerseys every uh, every stadium you go into. I'm not even sure if they sell them on every single team, um, but let alone you see the six twos all throughout the stadium. I always appreciate that man. Just getting uh, showing showing the O line love is always is always gangsta. But um, playing together. I was I was obviously there just for support, but um, it's uh, it makes people think, you know, has playing together ever became like a, a thought or a possibility in our heads? That it, has it ever been close? Um, me personally, I think the closest it was ever going to be in the NFL, at least knowing that we played uh, high school and college together, the closest it was ever going to be was the. Uh, the 2013 draft where the Eagles took Zach Ertz over me, um, yeah. and I was butt hurt. I'm still butt hurt about it, but it's whatever. <laughs> um, it's uh, it, it worked it's, out for everybody. It sure did. It sure did. Zach was not the wrong pick. Obviously, yeah, no. helped you guys win a lot of games. The most career or most single season helped receptions. Yeah, record holder. I, I can't say enough about Zach Ertz, but Fourth it's down. Uh, but yeah, no, getting that uh, opportunity to to play with you in the league has always been something. Obviously. You know, I want to say dream about, but yeah, I, I've played with you on every single level of football, so it's uh, that was definitely something that, that would have been cool. Yeah, I mean, I think we were both upset when uh, when the on draft night when that happened, but um, it ended up working out for everybody. Zach Ertz ended up being uh, a franchise uh, best tight end. Uh, I mean, I think uh, the numbers he put up while he was here were unbelievable. One hundred percent, including in a Super Bowl, he had a career game where he had a uh, a pivotal touchdown and a fourth huge, down conversion late huge in the game. Touchdown. And uh, besides that, was just an outstanding teammate, friend, and member of the Philadelphia community. Um, and I think it worked out pretty good for you. If I uh, were were to uh, uh, say that myself, I think you would probably agree. 1, Things have worked out decent in Kansas City for you. <laughs> So um, couldn't be happier. Ten years later, yeah, we really haven't gotten the opportunity. I think um, you know we've both been really, really fortunate to be with the same franchise and 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 be appreciated where we're at. And uh, it's it's hard to leave um, a franchise when you, you when you feel that amount of respect uh, being given to you. And uh, I think um, we really yeah, haven't I mean, had an I opportunity can't. to do it. I can't imagine playing anywhere else but Kansas City. I'm sure it's the same with you, man. Let's get into the next topic. All right. Huge comebacks were the uh, uh, the theme of the week. Uh, and it starts off with the Browns giving up 13 nah. points to the Jets in the final two minutes. Nah. We're both from Cleveland, so we're Browns fans. So that's... that's under, under, under the table, we're definitely Browns fans. 
I don't even think it's under. The, I mean, I guess you have to be under the table because the Browns are still AFC. Yeah. Right. For me, doesn't really impact. I hope the Browns go to the Super Bowl every year outside of the Chiefs. Uh, but um, yeah, I think you know it's always we always want the Browns to do well. So um, yeah, they blow a big lead uh, to the Jets late. The Ravens lose a 21-point lead heading into fourth to the Dolphins, which was one of the most unbelievable performances Electric. I've seen. I mean, Electric oh, my gosh. Game, I remember live, you only get the certain games that are regional for me because I don't have uh, the red zone and all these other things that you can get all the games at once. So I'm yeah. keeping track on my phone to all these other games. I thought the Ravens game was sealed. Like, I thought it was done. They were and I look back, and, and all of a sudden, I'm like, what the hell happened? And uh, watching the highlights of that, I mean, t- I mean talk Tyree about Hill somebody. Jalen Waddle. And then yeah, well, and Tua. Tua. Yeah, don't Tua. discount the guy throwing it to him. But yeah, I, I mean, mean, they were wide ass open. But yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we talked about I, you know, the Dolphins' offense. Holy cow! I mean, they got some firepower. They on that got thing. speed, man. Yeah, they and, got speed down there. And then obviously Electric. the Raiders lost a twenty point lead to the Cardinals in an overtime loss. Whoa. Yeah. Did not see that one coming. Out of all those games, obviously the the score between the Ravens and Miami was a. It looked like a sealed sealed game, but um, right. the Raiders to lose a twenty point lead to a team that we just played. I mean, I, shout out to the Cardinals showing some heart. You yeah. know, coming through, finding a way at the end of games that they had a two point conversion after a timeout that they ended up getting a delay a game. So they yeah. had a two point conversion from the seven yard line. Right, and they AJ Green in the back of the end zone. It was, I mean, it was it was full of excitement. Um, if you're just a fan watching, obviously, if you're the Raiders, you're just getting hit with daggers in the in the side. The Raiders come out in overtime, get a big stop, are marching the ball downfield, and then a guy is trying to give every effort, every ounce of effort that he can by getting north in Hunter Renfro yeah. and uh, Isaiah Simmons. Huge playmaker. I think he was a first-round draft pick last year. Kansas City guy comes in and lays the wood, and sure enough, the ball pops right out. Yeah. And the uh, game sealed by a fumble recovery to the house. <laughs> and it's in it's in Las Vegas. You can there's an angle on the field. <clears throat> there's an angle on the field where you can see the Raiders fans in the background. <clears throat> while number seven, I forget his name, is running it back. And yeah. it is just heartbreak. It's just, you know. it's just, mother fuck! <laughs> ah! How do we get here? Right. Yeah, I, what do you think leads to, is this, I'd be curious if, are there more like big blown leads and comebacks early in the season, do you think? I wonder if that's a trend. That's a, that's a great question. I mean, we were talking about it earlier. That I think handling adversity is something that you have to grow every single year. You know, you might have leaders that know how to handle a situation like that and you kind of follow suit. But at the same time, you're going to have to, you know, see how everybody reacts in those situations right. and, and regroup, man. And these are also situations that a lot of times you haven't done yet, right? Like most of these teams haven't run a four-minute operation the entire off season. So all of a sudden now you're getting into a situation where you're seeing terrible run looks and you have to try and manufacture ways to end the game out. Uh, two minute drills, you rep two minute drills all the time, all off season, but it's not live. It's not it's, when it's, it's against crucial, your defense, right? Yeah. yeah. And then in the defense is against your offense. You're not seeing and all of a sudden you're out there. You're running incredibly simple coverages, trying to face guys like Jalen Waddle and freaking, uh, you know, Tyreek. And then all of a sudden it's, before you know it, they put up 21 points in a matter of minutes. Um, so I, I got to think that this – I think that that probably – I'd be curious what the trend was uh, if this is something that teams deal with a lot. I think you're right. I think adversity is something you have to learn how to fight through. And the best teams find ways to get things done mm-hmm. in times when, uh, when it's not easy and when they need to get done. Yeah, uh, Those end up being the teams that end up playing late – uh, in the January and February, the teams that are able to weather storms, the teams that are able to uh, stop momentum, the teams that are able to, uh, you know, f- finish close games when it matters. Those are the teams that end up being uh, the best teams usually. 100% with you, brother. Do you think momentum is real? 1,000%. Momentum, I, I'm a firm believer that momentum is, I want to say everything, but that energy the feeling that energy of 
of you know success of oh we got this yeah you know what i mean because if you don't have momentum now doubt might creep in start questioning some things you start looking at how other guys are reacting to things if it's not high energy i'm a big either you're a fountain or you're a drain baby either you're giving somebody life or you're taking it out of them and i need that momentum man i need that high energy i need that 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 big time play that gets the D, that gets everybody going gets the juice gets the juices going i pride myself on trying to make that play for us to get that momentum because i think it's such a big deal yeah there was an article written i think last december by david hale uh that basically said momentum's not real and I, I could not first. I just could not. What does David do other than write? I don't know. I don't know David Hale, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, maybe I should, but I think that anybody that's played the game knows that momentum is, is for sure something that you feel out there, especially when you're at home, especially when the crowd's with you. Um, energy is real, right? And when, when things are going a certain way, it tends to snowball. It tends to continue to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, energy, you know, can, it can people feed off of each other. Teammates feed off of each other. Momentum is without a doubt, in my opinion, uh, uh, you know, it's it's almost palatable when it's when it's really clicking. You palatable. can just feel things P-A. happen. Pal- All right. L-A. I meant palpable. I said palatable. Pal- like it's tasteable. That's I gotta harder. work out my Instead vocabulary for t- the this week. Pal- I didn't sleep pal- much. Pal- I just played a Monday night pal- game, pal- so pal- my my vocab is uh, is off tonight. Today, but in particular about momentum, I think uh, there's crucial times in a game where that you can build momentum, or it can uh, it can you know snowball out of hand, and that's uh, at the beginning and ends of halves. I think getting a good start to a half and finishing a half end up being crucial moments of the game. And they end up setting the tone for uh, how it goes. If you if you score right before half, that is such a big feeling for the offense Huge. and for the team. If you get off to a good start to open up the game, we've just, we already talked on that earlier. That's a big momentum tone setter right away. Have Automatically to. puts the pressure on the other team. But that being said, what I will agree with David Hale is that the best teams find a way to weather those storms, right? We just talked mm-hmm. about that. Um, the ability to uh, stay focused, locked in, where you talked about earlier, where you can't let all of this outside energy and feeling of pressure dictate how you're about to go out on the field. The best teams find a way to just stay right here. Even go out Steven, there, focus, man. do your job, get out there. Go, and, and then if you stay right there, when the play's there to be made, you'll make the play. Mm-hmm. And you'll you'll get that energy out of making that play and get yep. that momentum out of making that play. I'm with you, brother. So the uh, the Bears go to shotgun on the goal line versus the Packers late in the game. Uh, down 14 with 8-12 left. Uh, ball inside the one-yard line. Fourth and goal. You want to talk about big-time plays. Um, goal line offenses, man. Yeah. It's uh, gosh, there's always there's always that kind of just question. Do you go big? Do you kind of spread it out even more, knowing that it's you know, all you need is a short completion? Um, I think uh, I think it can get a little complicated down there. I think it try some teams uh, try and get a little too creative or a little too cute to say. Um, Don't even get me started. Do not even get me started. <laughs> I if you start have, it up. Let's hear it, bud. All right. If you have game on the line. Fourth and one on the goal line. What play are you running? There's only one right answer. Roll out. I'm going roll out. Yeah, roll pass. Athletic, yeah. That's athletic not a bad quarterback. Athletic quarterback. Give a guy who's who's a playmaker the ball in his hands, not in the pocket, um, and have a concept attached to it where you got guys flying everywhere. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer. I, I'm not mad at them going shotgun. I think giving an athletic quarterback like Fields um, vision on the defense the entire time, sometimes being a drop back quarterback, uh, getting under center, there's times where you just turn your back to the defense. And I think that's a critical play where I would like my quarterback or my playmaker who makes shit shake even when, you know, it's not the right call or they got us. You know, the defense is running the right blitz or something. Um, keeping his eyes on the defense um, in the backfield, I think, is a safe move. 
Um, I don't, actually don't know what play they ran. but uh, I don't care what they ran. They didn't run the right play. There's only <laughs> one correct answer, and that's because it is the highest percentage chance of getting one yard. And that's quarterback sneak. Quarterback sneaking it? it? It blows my mind how many teams do not run a fucking quarterback sneak with one goddamn yard. What the fuck are you doing? What if, are you, what if it's we're a going 90, double A? It's a 92% chance. There's not a play in the playbook that has a higher percentage chance of working than quarterback sneak. And all of you guys that throw and catch the ball, nobody ever fucking thinks about it. It's the most obvious answer. There's this, they can only stop it if they go all out to stop it. If they all submarine, they have six fat guys inside trying to stop it, and then you have other shit wide open. It's, it is mind-blowing to me how many people forget about quarterback sneak. So and what, this is NFL so what if they go summer, what if they go submarine defense? They pack the, they pack the a gaps. They put a guy right over you. What do, what do we do? Even do then, we, do we have an alert on it or do we give the quarterback even, the keys to be able to get out of this shit? Even, first of all, I don't want to give up strategy, but we, <laughs> okay. But even if they go all out, the chances of them stopping it for a yard are so small. Even if they all submarine, the play is an astronomically higher percent chance than anything else you're going to call. It's 90 some percent. Yeah, it's not no, even close. I hear you. I hear you want to talk about analytics? This is the most this is the most fucked up analytic in the world that teams miss routinely. I swear to god. I'm with you. We, listen, we had to get away mind. from it. We had to get away from it. Well, that's the because our quarterback's kneecap was in the side of his side of his leg. Okay, yeah, well, I was well, looking. Da- I was looking, staring directly at Pat laying on the ground, just pointing at his knee and his kneecap in the side. I was looking at it like, ah, what the? F-? So that He's is dead. So for those of you listening, somebody know, come get Pat. I couldn't even look at it. It was gruesome, dude. I thought it was over for him. So that is one good reason not to run quarterback sneak is if you have a quarterback who has weird hips that move in an odd way, and for some reason he hurts his knee running quarterback sneak. It's the only time I've ever seen a quarterback get hurt running QB sneak. I've never seen that injury ever in my life. <laughs> okay, that was the one. That was a one-time yeah, deal, man. Pat Pat got hurt doing a QB sneak, so I guess I understand why you don't want to run it with Pat. But yeah, that um, was crazy. Yeah, I don't want to give up. I mean, I certainly feel very strong about quarterback sneak. Shout out to Pat uh, for getting the first down though on that, by the way. Hey. 90-some percent chance working. Got it. What are we thinking about here? My loser quarterback. This is one of the things I'm very – I think it's such an underutilized play when it's a a yard or less in the NFL. All right, Bucks saints brawl in New Orleans. Brady and Lattimore jawing at each other. Uh, Mike Evans jumps into it to protect Tom. And all of a sudden, uh, he's getting tossed. He says protecting Tom. These two, Lattimore – and Evans have had beef before. I just think so you don't it was believe an it. excuse to be able to tee off on him. Like he was, That's he was waiting for that one moment to be able to. And I'm a fan of all three of these guys. Lattimore, Cleveland guy, obviously Tom Brady's absolutely amazing, and then Mike Evans is a stud. Uh, been the most consistent receiver since he's been in the league. Um, and he's, I think personally, they had beef, and he was just like. That moment it was just a flip of the switch. He just instinctually he just he just went into like hunt mode, and he and he had to he had to. And, and on top of that, you know, you always want to be there for your guys, but at the same time, it, I don't I didn't see Lattimore, you know, pushing him, or I I didn't see Lattimore, you know, doing anything physical to Tom. So it's like, at what point are you just like, oh yeah, I had to defend him to. <laughs> well, whether it's real or not, absolutely lay him out. Yeah. I mean, if if it's not the reason Mike, if it's not the real reason Mike did it, it's a great get out of jail free card. If you want to get, if you get a personal foul for fighting, and the coach is like, "What in the hell were you doing?" Like, I'm, I'm defending, I'm defending Tom Brady. Good. Oh, hey, I'll take that every day of the week, right? <laughs> <laughs> Defending the quarterback is a percent. get out of jail free card. Why the hell did you just punch that guy? Uh, he uh, he hit Jalen. All right, good job. <laughs> It's a get out of jail free card. Always got to protect the quarterback. I respect it. I'm not saying I don't respect the move. I just think that it was more than exactly what you just said. You get out of jail free card, man. Oh. Veteran rest day. 
Tom Brady comes out, and uh, reportedly every Wednesday, uh, vet day for all the uh, for all the old geezers on the team. Um, I would have definitely been put in that boat. I'm a. You get? Are you a vet day guy? Well, I have to be because I get veteran rest days on Wednesdays. So um, I am a <laughs> pansy. I have no choice but to uh, be in full support of this. Um, Just when I thought we worked harder than everybody. <laughs> This was You're taking uh, days off. <laughs> Son we, of a we still go out there. We're still out at practice, but uh, yeah, we get some veteran rest days. For me, I think I'm trying to think of who else gets it. Lane Johnson. Uh, See, I I'm cool with Brady getting it because he's 40 plus. He's got six rings, seven, however many he's got. You know, proven. I'm Four. I'm about to be 35 in November. <sighs> Damn, Travis, I play center. Old. I play every snap. I don't get. A playoff. I'm out there. I will say this. I used to be firmly against this, uh, and I didn't think, especially at a position of communication, right? Like part of my part of my job is not just doing my job. Part of my job is making sure that everybody else is on the same page and what's and everything is being communicated in a way. Accountability. Yeah. Yeah. That. Well, not just that, but everything's being communicated, and um, and 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 everybody else knows what they're supposed to do off of that communication. Yeah. So the quarterback and center are two positions that control a lot of that communication. So it's hard. It was hard for me to fathom not being out there and handling that. Um, that being said, I think, you know, we went to some of these, I finally got talked into it by some of the strength coaches coming to Philadelphia <laughs> and saying, listen, Jason, this is going to really help you. We've done this with the Rams we know that this is going to make a meaningful impact on your legs. Will you please just try it out? And um, I started doing it, and I'm not going to lie. I felt much better on game day, so we've kept doing it. Uh, you, I think, you, uh, you, you, you definitely felt the difference. 1,000%. You don't feel a difference when you guys go to walk through Wednesdays later in the year? I feel I, better on Wednesday. But maybe you still got young legs, but I'm telling you, I think without question, it has made an impact on my legs. Um, and it was something that I was vehemently against uh, even just three years ago. And I have been swayed uh, as a veteran player that it's probably in my best interest to uh, take some of these rest days as, as much as it, as much as it, pains me to not be out on the field and not to be out there with my teammates i've been talked into it being the best thing uh for the team and for me so uh this guy's easily persuaded i cannot fathom not being in practice i ca i have to get the reps i have to be well to be clear i have to we find. don't have we don't have the whole day off no, no, no. Yeah, I, I get it. I'm, I'm, we're just talking about practice and actually running. You know, doing doing all the physical things in practice that you would do that would get you tired, that would put miles on your legs, that would yeah. you know things like that. I completely get that. I oh. I need those reps. I need that full speed tempo. I think when we go to I think when we go to kind of that uh, that walk through tempo later on in the year to help us save our legs. I feel like that's is rest day as i'll ever get you know what i mean like i i think yeah. that i'll at least be out there on the field certain reps i might not get all the reps that i would in a game you know yeah. there's other guys you know that that need those reps too in case something does happen so it's a it's a good way to um get the young guys more acclimated um but at the same time I know when I'm practicing and that play looks good, Coach Reed likes that play. And uh, <laughs> I'm, trying to get them things, to get I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get them things dialed up on Sunday. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a hot topic. I mean, this whole concept of rest, whether it's the training camp, the season, the NBA, all of a sudden having rest days. I mean, um, the idea of, uh, of trying to keep guys fresh in professional sports is – changed so drastically over the past even just two three years um you know i don't know what the right answer is to be honest with you i think there's benefits obviously to practicing and there's benefits to resting and um i just yeah I, it, it's it's a, it's a hard one to really know what the right answer is i know that my legs feel better 
on game day. I haven't gone to this, uh, but two or three years ago, I was in the exact same position as you. So I'll be waiting for two years from now when you tell me, hey, thank God I'm getting rest days. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Time for our new heights. Kelsey stamp of the week. Um, I think we finally are kind of narrowing in on what we want this to be. Last week, yeah. we kind of made it more like a player of the week type thing. And uh, there's enough that's of those cool. awards. There's enough yeah, there, that, that's all over the place. I think what really gets us fired up as uh, players in the league is when you watch somebody else who hasn't really gotten that uh, credit yet or hasn't gotten that shine yet, that go ahead play, and, yeah. and, and make that play that separates themselves. Um, you know, I think uh, the NFL is amazing, man. You're dealing with guys who are quite literally getting the opportunity to realize the dreams that they've had since they've been kids. Mm-hmm. Every single day, guys are going out there, and these are th- this. They're playing a game that, you know, it, this is what they wanted to do their whole lives, and they're finally on the biggest stage in the world. And there is nothing greater in the NFL than watching a guy go out there and make a huge play, and all of a sudden, millions of people know that guy's name. So for this week, my new heights stamp of the week goes to the Watsons. The, I'm going to give it to both of them. I'm going to give it to both of them. Justin Watson and Jalen Watson in Kansas City, both of those guys making huge plays at the end of the game. Two of the biggest uh, plays of the game, man. Well, those were the biggest plays. The yeah. pick six and that big touchdown coming out of the second half, coming out for the second half. Um, those ended up being the crucial moments that ultimately led to you guys being 2-0. And, uh, man, I love it when guys make plays like that. I absolutely and, um, love it, man. Great job, Watsons. The Watsons, Jalen and Justin, man, my guys. Uh, I'm going with the Miami quarterback, Tua, coming through all the scrutiny over the offseason, all the speculation with the Tyreek podcast and, you know, is he is he able to get the ball downfield to these speedsters? Is he able yeah. to lead his team to victory? You Knowing last year there were times where they took him out in the most critical moments and put like a, a veteran quarterback in there, right? In Fitzpatrick, so it's like for him to be down twenty one and to have that comeback uh, in the fashion that he did it, uh, going up top to the two big guys, um, it was I was happy for him. I was happy as hell for him, especially against a great Ravens defense like that. Yeah, it's tremendous. So, I mean, to put six touchdowns up in one half, uh, I don't know if that was an NFL record, Miami record, what it was, but it was insane uh, the second half that he had. And, um, you know, if you can close games out like that as a quarterback and have the poise to do that under uh, critical situations, uh, yeah, that answers a lot of the questions around Tua. Great job. <laughs> Chiefs at the Colts next week, 1 p.m. game. Colts have uh, been struggling a little bit to start the season off. Uh, Don't get caught up do in think? the BS. Don't get right? caught up in the BS, man. That is a that is a very well coached team. That is, they have a, a star studded lineup in, on the defensive side of the ball. Yep. Um, offense is very run heavy, um, but they got I think Michael Pittman Jr. I think that's his name. Um, yep. Stud. Yep. Um, so and a veteran quarterback that's won a lot of games. Um, so I, I, I expect to play a very motivated team and just to go in there with, uh, with a mentality of getting the job done. We're going to be in a bar fight for sure. And it's in their house. Uh, Indianapolis is a crazy environment in that dome. Uh, the nap gets, gets rocking for them. And uh, sure enough, uh, can't let this game make you feel at ease. Yeah, you, you are going to get the best Colts team you can get one hundred percent, and that's a, and that's it, on film and the players that they have. That's a very good team. Looking for their first win. This is a huge game for the Colts. You're getting a fired up coaching staff. Frank Reich, all those guys are going to be doing everything they can possibly to get this first win. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a hungry team. Uh, this is going to be an awesome game to keep our eye on. They have a lot of guys that are going to get the job done. You know, professionals yep. in the building, veteran quarterback. Um, being winless is obviously how with how good they are on paper um, yeah. is probably stinging them right now real bad. Right. So it's like you know you're going to get that team to come out uh, with their backs against the wall and giving you their best shot. You know, not saying that they would otherwise, but it's definitely um, motivation for them at this point. 
No doubt. So we know we can't can't come in slacking, man. And it starts during the week, baby. Just take care of day by day, and and then what you can, what you can control during the week, getting that, getting the body rest, and uh, and know that you're going to be in for a four quarter fight, man. Eagles and Commanders, one p.m. Eastern, first divisional game, uh, playing former quarterback Carson Wentz. Obviously, he's a, a friend of yours, I've heard of a, him. Guy, a guy, yeah. a guy that you've played your tail off with. Um, that legendary run, uh, Super Bowl run, he was the culprit for the uh, for the majority part of that season. Man, making play after yeah. play. Um, have you faced him already? Have you played him yet since he's? Left? I have not. No, I have. I haven't played Carson outside of uh, being his teammate. So this will be the first. Kind of wish it was in the link uh, for the first go around, but it's going to be in Washington. Um, and I, you know, I've already texted him today. You know, I think, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. He was a great friend and great teammate while he was in Philadelphia. Um, and this is like a, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, of a quandary because on one end, you know, you, yeah, you want, I want Carson to play well and I want him to do well, but I certainly don't want him to play good, uh, on Sunday and I want him to, to lose. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'm I'm always rooting for that guy. Um, I think, uh, you know, unfortunately things didn't end well in Philadelphia for him. Uh, you know, got hurt after having an MVP like season. We ended up going on winning the Super Bowl, uh, and then after that, it was it felt like you know he's always just trying to come back from injuries. First the knee, then it was a back. Um, yeah, it's and, been an uphill battle ever since the uh, that Super Bowl run, man. Yeah, and um, you know, it's, I think. Uh, as the team started to get a little bit worse and started to lose some players, uh, you know, it just kind of faded downhill. And, um, you know, I thought he played well in Indy last year outside of that, that last game. It didn't end well. Dude, he absolutely uh, killed it. Just handed it off every other play. It was awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got the leading rusher in the league. Of course that quarterback's going to be playing great, man. So I asked this then. The Eagles were kind of um, – showing Rieger last night uh, and how much they appreciated him and his time in, in Philly. Um, yeah. Obviously, there were some things said when he left Philly, but do you think that Carson Wentz gets that fair you know, salute when he comes back to, to Philly or he plays against the Eagles? Are the Eagles fan base respecting it, or is it just like how it <sighs> ended was just, you know? It was a bad ending. Um, whenever, uh, you know, you're, you're clearly wanting out of a city – I feel like it's you're in a rough spot as a player. There are still a lot of fans in Philly that I know appreciate Carson and um, especially who he was as a person and to the community. Uh, you know, he he he's a he's a great person. I saw you a bunch of Wentz jerseys anymore. in the link on Monday and night. I'll tell you so what, there are still people in Wentzylvania, uh, Wentzylvania for sure. Uh, they uh, they will always be Carson Wentz fans. And um, that being said. If I was a betting man, I think when he comes back to the link uh, in the future, uh, it will probably not be to a roaring amount of applause, although I hope it is. How would you best describe playing with Carson, man? Because uh, from a kind of a fan's point of view, at least from what I saw, it's very it's kind of sporadic. It was almost like it was controlled chaos. Like he, yeah. like he's he's a baller. Don't get me wrong. Like when that ball snapped, he he has the ability to make some make some shit shake. But uh, it was never to me like he had full control over the over what was going on out there i think uh you know carson is a incredibly smart player he was a guy that um was a pleasure to game plan with and play with whenever you're dealing with a guy that is as competitive as he is and doesn't want to accept a negative play you're going to get times where it ends up being magical or something happens that yeah. you know you didn't expect like Jason Kelsey pulling you out of a, a burning fire <laughs> a pile. yeah Just, or yeah or you're gonna get times where you kind of run into a sack or you uh extend a play and you don't throw the ball away you know you know he I think Carson is such a competitive person that it's hard for him to just throw the ball away or dirt a ball and move on to the next snap. And um, those have gotten him into trouble in the past, but they've also been some of his 
biggest highlights Electric, of his career. Yeah. So Great it's place. it's tough to be uh, critical of that, and that's something whenever you're dealing with a guy that is um, as spontaneous as he is, you it's it's hard to know whether you want to dial that back or whether you want to let him keep doing that. And really, the you answer is free. if it's working, keep doing it. And if it's not, we got to kind of dial it back. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. I always love playing those those, those kind of quarterbacks are are the type that I love playing with. By the way, so. Yeah, I mean, Pat is about as spontaneous and creative yeah. as you can get as a quarterback. 1,000%. And, and, and even Pat at times, like as, as unbelievable as he is, sometimes when he does that, it leads to some of the, like his downfalls of games, right? Like nobody's perfect 100% of the time. Pat is, in he's my opinion, like he's, he's probably the best quarterback in the year. Like, 90. Yeah. Two percent chance that Pat's going to make the play. <laughs> like you know, he's a he's clearly you know in the premier level of quarterback play in the NFL. Uh, but whenever you're dealing with somebody that is trying to extend a play, trying to make something happen, you're also going to get negatives at the, of those at times. That's just the inevitability of that situation. Yeah. And you were right the first time; he's the best quarterback in the league. Um, well, not so far. Jalen Hurts says something to say about that, but yeah, oh, well, he had a good game. Guy had a good game. Two good games, two good games. Yeah, well, two and zero, two and zero. You know, we'll, we shall see what happens in week three, baby. All righty, well, that about wraps up the third episode of New Heights. You yeah. new, <laughs> new episodes happen every Wednesday during the season. You can watch and subscribe on YouTube to the New Heights channel, and uh, listen and subscribe to wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. We sure did. Uh, Catch you next week.